Hello viewers. My name is Pawan Krishna. Today we are going to learn about India's legendary physicist Dr. C. V. Raman. We are not going to learn about him just because he got Nobel Prize. But we are learning about him because he achieved such a phenomenal success with very limited resources. Unlike today, those days science laboratories never had sufficient equipment for experiments. But these limitations never stopped Raman to achieve what he wanted to achieve. Now let us get into the lesson. In the year 1930, the most unexpected thing happened in the world of science. A young Indian researcher Chandrasekhar Venkatraman won Nobel Prize for Physics for his groundbreaking discovery of the phenomenon called Raman effect. So in the year 1930, our Indian physicist Chandrasekhar Venkatraman won Nobel Prize for his theory and discovery of Raman effect. Let us look into his career. C. V. Raman born on 7th November 1888, Tirchrapalli, Tamil Nadu. He completed his early education in Presidency College, Chennai. After clearing the civil service competitive exam and becoming the Deputy Accountant General in Calcutta, he still found the time to pursue scientific research at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Sciences. In 1917, he finally gave up his administrative position to become a professor of physics at Calcutta University. He born in Tirchirapalli on 7 November 1888, Tamil Nadu. His fundamental education and graduation completed in Presidency College, Chennai. After his education, he cleared his civil service competitive examination and became Deputy Accountant General in Calcutta. Being the Deputy Accountant General, he did not left his love towards physics. So he pursued scientific research at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Sciences. As he felt his job, Deputy Accountant General is stopping him being a complete physicist. He left the job in 1917 and finally completely become a professor for physics in Calcutta University. First International Acceptance On Raman's first trip to London as a delegate at Universities Congress in 1921, leading physicists of the time like J.J. Thompson and Lord Rutherford were already acquainted with Raman's significant study in the field of optics and acoustics. Raman had studied classical percussion instruments like the tabla and the mridangam. More specifically, the mathematical relationships that produced the pleasing effects of the sounds. So in 1921 itself, his theory on optics and acoustics were accepted by famous physicists of that time, J.J. Thompson and Lord Rutherford. And Raman also studied mathematical relationships of the sounds made by Tabla and the Mridangam. Reason behind Mediterranean Blue Sir C. V. Raman watched the sea and its blue color as he was voyaging to London in 1921. Sir C. V. Raman was not convinced by the earlier explanation that the blue color was the reflection of the sky by the Lord Rayleigh. Sir C. V. Raman speculated that it could be because of the scattering of sunlight by water molecules and his consequent experiments using polarized nickel prism on sample of seawater and uh, proved his point. Research that led to Nobel Prize. On his return to India, he initiated research in three areas. The scattering of light by liquids, the scattering of x-rays by liquids, viscosity of liquids. So he started research on three aspects. Number one is scattering of light by liquids, scattering of x-rays by liquids and viscosity of liquids. 
of these three, it was the work in the first area, which means the scattering of the light by liquids, that fetched him the Nobel Prize. His distinguished associates such as K. R. Ramanathan and K. S. Krishnan conducted and supervised many experiments along these lines. On the morning of 28th February 1928, Raman and his associates had irrefutable proof of the modified radiations observed in the scattering experiments due to molecular vibrations. The discovery was announced through the Associated Press on 29th February and 8th March. Raman sent a detailed note along with an explanation to Nature. Nature is one of the magazines, science magazine. So once he returned from London, he started his research on three areas. Number one is scattering of light by liquids, scattering of X-rays by liquids, viscosity of the liquids. And the scattering of the light by liquids. This research fetched him the Nobel Prize. And his team members' names were K. R. Ramanathan and K. S. Krishnan. This team performed many of the experiments to achieve this. And they achieved the success on the morning of 20th February 1928 and uh, they have announced this with press conference on 29th February and 8th March. Now let us see applications of Raman effect. What is Raman effect? Raman discovered that when a light beam travels through a medium, it is deflected by the molecules in the medium. Very interestingly, a small part of the emerging light beam after being deflected by the molecules had different wavelength and color from the phenomenon, which initiated the study called Raman spectroscopy. Today, Raman spectroscopy finds lot of applications in various areas such as the study of the molecular structure of the compounds, handheld scanners for the detecting drugs and explosives, the pharmaceutical industry and medical diagnostics. Raman effect explains us that if a beam travels through a medium, and the beam is going to be deflected by molecular molecules in the medium. When this beam deflected, then its wavelength and color is going to be changed, which is called as Raman's spectroscopy. And this Raman's effect is used in many of the current scenarios such as handheld scanners for detecting drugs and explosives and many of the pharmaceutical industry and medical diagnostics using this theory.